Okay, good evening everyone. It is Tuesday night. I'm Laura Van Arndonk Baugh. This is To Write and Have Written. I think I got everything started All right. Ah! Hey PJ Zufit, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate that. Yeah, and um, yeah, this will be, woo, this will be fun. So, um, since PJ Zufit just uh, gave me that lovely intro, uh, segue there, opening, opportunity, I don't know, something. Um, I'm just going to throw out a couple of things that uh, occurred to me while I was um, waiting for seven o'clock to roll around tonight, um, it, which was how fun it has been to watch this small niche little community around the stream uh, grow over the last few months. So uh, Shy Red Fox is in the chat, has a uh, release that is coming out this month. So she will be on my blog tomorrow. Um, Bridger, who is usually here, uh, maybe in the chat, I don't know yet, um, has a release or just had a release. I'm not actually sure of the date. So if you want to throw that in the chat, Bridger, feel for absolutely free. Um, PJ Zupit uh, contacted me to uh, invite me onto a podcast. So we will be recording that soon. So that'll be fun. Like all kinds of, um, you know, fun things, you know, I got to, um, read and blurb Bridger's book. Uh, I've got Shy Red Fox on my blog. I've got, you know, all of, everything is like coming back and forth. So, hey, you guys, if you are here and you have something to promote, free reign in the chat for the next five minutes. Throw in your link to your free story to download or, you know, the release that you've got coming out or whatever, just because, you know, hey, I think it's pretty cool that we're all in here doing things. So um, there you go. Please Please do, yes, stop. <laughs> Kate's like, books, books, books. Yes, please throw everything in there. It'll be fun. So yeah, it'll be, uh, we'll just we'll just do a little sharing. Free free self-promo right now. Um, and I got uh, a package today. It's sitting on here on my desk. So I will show you um, from Michelle Israel Harper sent me two books today. So Silence the Siren uh, is one that I got to uh, read in advance to blurb and this is oh, I think it's the third in the series watch me go on live and get that wrong I'm pretty sure it's the third in the series um, uh, kill the beast I'm totally blanking on number two and then um, silence the siren oh my gosh was it on the back let me see if it's on the back no this says it's book two maybe the first one was just a novella maybe it's three stories but only two and like I don't know Never mind. I'm gonna stop trying to promote. Anyway, this is the other book. <laughs> this is the other one she sent me, um, and this one's actually uh, a children's book that she wrote um, for her kids and um, a family, and uh, then went ahead and it got uh, published. So that's um, yeah, that's good. I'm just gonna pretend that I got all of that right. Um, what I saying here, all kinds, all kinds of great things. Um, yeah, that's actually a pretty good prep for just how tonight's gonna go, guys. I'm really sorry. There we go. So, okay, yeah, so we've got what's going on in the chat. We have PJ Zufit has thrown up some free samples, which is great. Hey, DM Stretch, thanks for stopping by. Um, and yeah, if anybody else wants to, oh, I don't, I don't think Bridger's here in the chat yet. So if anybody, if Bridger shows up in a minute or two, somebody remind uh, her to to throw up a link to her new release because I know that is happening either either just happened or is happening in this general time. So and there's a reason I can't keep track of anybody's dates <laughs> right now. It's because I can't keep track of my own dates. So if you were here when last we met on to write and have written, um, yeah. So I I said that this week we would be talking about Camp Nanorimo because. Uh, this is the second Tuesday, so it is uh, craft and development theme. I, I do try to stay on theme, mostly, relatively. Um, and I was, uh, I, I was, I said I was going to talk about uh, Camp Nano and how we could use it. And I was very pleased because as, as of last week, I was still on par for my word count for my goals for the month and I was making good progress and I was actually making pretty decent progress. I was feeling really solid. Yeah, um, that's not the case right now. No, that's that's not how that's going down right now. So that went completely off the rails this weekend. Um, so I was feeling a little, um, 
uh, no, 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 no. I was feeling a little overwhelmed, still a little stressed, like I can't keep up with things. So I actually sat down and I made, like I have to-do lists and things, but I actually sat down and I compiled, like what am I actually, why do I feel like I can't catch up? And the very, very short version, not the comprehensive version of that list, but the very short version of that list is, oh yeah, I'm writing an online course for one of my websites. I'm writing an online course, 21 lesson course for someone else um, that, you know, that so that that's another course that I'm doing. I'm taking two courses on advertising, one on Facebook ads, one on Amazon ads. Um, I'm overhauling a website, uh, my training and behavior website. Um, it's not, doesn't look any different yet, but it will, <laughs> I'm working on that. Um, I had to build the online hosting because I'm not using a, um, a turnkey learning management system for that for the course. I wanted to host that on my own site, so I had to build that. That was um, an adventure because uh, the software that I was using um, turns out to be a pretty decent piece of software, but the documentation's a little lacking. And so I had things like fully customizable and you open it up and they're like, yeah, if you know PHP. And I'm like, not well enough to do this, no. <laughs> so, and they're like, here's some sample code. But I didn't notice when I copied and pasted that that sample code is incomplete. It's missing a line, which means when you paste it, it crashes your entire website. Now you have to go figure out what's missing. Um, yeah, all of that. Anyway, and um, I was writing and recording a bunch of historical research videos, the ones that you guys got, um, the history of ramen, that was a repurposed piece of content, um, that I will be recording that as an educational video separately, but I put that um, slide tech deck together for, and um, then uh, I have seven more uh, of those to record, uh, to write and record. And, um, oh yeah, then I got an email thanking me um, and reminding me that I had agreed to judge for a contest, which is great, I'm happy to do that. And he, these are the five epic fantasy novels that I agreed to read and score this month. And not, not like cozy mysteries that I can just whip right through, epic fantasy novels. And I was like, oh, right, this is why I'm feeling like I'm not keeping up with anything. Um, so this weekend, um, yeah, Camp Nano went off the rails. <laughs> like, let, let's be more accurate. The Camp Nano got, you know, you know what? You are the least critical, like nobody's going to lose money if I don't do this. So Camp Nano's under the bus, bye. Sorry. Um, that, that, you know, these, <laughs> so I'm gonna talk a little bit about prioritizing. Um, and like good things are happening too. Um, I, uh, I have two short stories in that made uh, the finalists for the Rome Awards. So that's good. That's Arari and um, White Christmas, W-I-G-H-T, uh, Christmas, um, which got in as an audio drama. And then Arari got in as uh, just a regular short story category. Um, so that that was good. I sold a short story over the weekend. So that was good. So like stuff, stuff, good stuff is happening. Um, but yeah, I just I was like, oh, okay, now I understand why I am <laughs> so behind. Thank you, Kate is sending dark chocolate through the internet. Yeah, um, yeah. What I'm what I'm saying, like this is, first of all, <laughs> one of the courses, uh, not courses, but one of the business support groups I'm in, um, did a say no challenge last week. <laughs> like, you know, say no to something, write down what you said no to, put it on a post-it note, and then later when you see the post-it note, think about what. T what time and resources you were able to reclaim because you decided no to that thing. And I failed miserably at the say no challenge. Like that didn't even happen this week. <laughs> Clearly my say no challenge should have been like in January and February. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, sorry, it's gone. Um, but, oh, and I got my second dose of, my va of the uh, COVID-19 vaccine today. So yay, I'm happy about that. Didn't throw away my shot. Um, yeah, so where I was going with all this is, this is not like, um, wow, look how busy and important I am. Wow, look how overpacked my days are, you know, thing. This is a, sometimes, some, first of all, sometimes we need to be better at sorting and prioritizing and remembering all the things that we booked for. Um, so like the, the course, the Facebook ads course that I'm taking, which um, I'm quite enjoying, but I'm paying to take this class. So I really ought to keep up with it. And it is, um, a timed, it's not, you know, self-paced and it's not, you know, forever access. It is a keep up with the class and work along. And if you fall behind, then you're not going to have class, you know, professional support for these things that you're doing. 
And so I really, really want to get stuff done so that I can, you know, get my ads up and try this while I still have somebody on tap to say, hey, this is why that's not working. Here's what you should do instead, right? Um, so yeah, PJ Zufit, um, how are we getting the vaccine? Yeah, this is, um, yeah, this is a thing. So I will, I will tell you honestly, like how, how I did it. Um, a, a friend uh, tipped me into this and obviously things are gonna vary by state and whatnot. But um, I live on the edge of an urban area. Um, and if you go further out, um, I'm semi-rural, but if you go further out, um, it becomes a, an, a region that is much more politically um, homogenous, I guess, where there tends to be more vaccine hesitancy, is what I would say. <laughs> and so um, their vaccine appointments are less, uh, less competitive. So I just made, I, so today I drove an hour out to get my vaccine and um, I'm not, I'm feel bad. I didn't, didn't take it away from anybody. Um, I didn't jump the line. I didn't do anything. I just, um, you know, took it where somebody else was not as anxious to get it. So uh, if I have the, I have the ability to drive further to take advantage of that and um, that lift, you know, then a friend of mine just signed up for something locally um, where it is a much longer waits for vaccines. Um, so yeah, anyway, all that to go. Yeah, and Kate says it got lucky and just kept hitting refresh. Yeah, um, yeah. So it is. Uh, yeah, it's something. Oh, it's still not eligible. Yeah, that. And I, I'm gonna not to get too political here, but our our widely varying scales of eligibility and all of that. Like, wow, like it's it's a little chaotic. <laughs> so um, hoping that you can get your vaccine soon. That would be. Uh, that would be that would be good. We'll hope we'll hope that everybody has access soon. And and for my international friends, I know that um, we have way more vaccine availability here than than other places. And um, yeah, so we'll hope that we'll hope that that just keeps rolling out. And we'll get we'll get what we get. So, okay. Um, all right. Let's see. What are we doing? Um, I have no idea where I was. It's gone. So this past weekend. Um, was going to be round two of the NYC Midnight Short Story Contest. And I think I talked about that on the stream before, but what it is, is it is a, as it says on the tin, a short story contest. But it's it's one that is all about quick adaptability and it's it's basically like a, it's basically like NaNoWriMo in a box for a weekend um, because the, the, each heat, there are four heats to go through the contest, um, and each one you will receive prompts and then a period of time to write the story. So um, like for the first round, my prompt was, oh, let me see if I can remember this. I had to be in the genre of, um, of a heist, of a, of a criminal heist genre. It had to be, it had to include a gemologist, and I don't remember what the third component was because I didn't actually plan to talk about this and I didn't make any notes and I haven't thought about it for a while <laughs> but I had to have a gemologist and it had to be a heist um and then there will be a third particle that has to be in there as well um and then you have a set period of time so the first round I think is um seven days and the second round is four days and then two days and then one day uh if I recall correctly and they were uh, had a lot of entries and they just um hadn't gotten back uh, with results from the first heat yet, um, by this time last week. And, um, you know, when I went on the stream, I hadn't gotten results yet. And they were, and, but last weekend, starting on Friday was supposed to be the next Thursday or Friday was supposed to be heat two. And, um, and I'm actually <laughs> remember thinking, okay, I really want to make it to the second round because like, that is the goal of the contest. But also I'm looking at my to-do list and it would be great if I didn't have to try to write a short story this weekend under pressure. And um, yeah, I didn't make it. Um, so that's good, bad. I don't know, it worked out in my favor. I was able to, to work on my online course instead. Um, and so I don't feel bad at all. And I mean, obviously like it would have been nice to make round two, but on the other hand, my first story was not a pair of bad story, but it wasn't like, this is the best thing I've ever written. You know, I knew it was an ad perfectly adequate, but not you know, amazing story. So I don't feel bad about that. Um, so landscaping. Thank you, Kate. Kate uh, Beta read uh, that story for me, I think. So yeah, gemologist, landscaping, and a heist. 
thank you. This is this is why I have this is why I have my my crowdsourced brain here in the chat because there is nothing like God bless Evernote. It is the only way Evernote and Todoist are the only way I'm getting anything done that, right now this week. So anyway, all of that and I knew coming up on the stream I'm like, well, I was going to talk about how Camp Na NaNoWriMo is uh, is helpful and all of these things and um, and yeah, I just yeeted Camp Nano out the window so I could work on these other things. Um, and so I thought, okay, well, I can talk about, you know, how I'm prioritizing and that sort of thing. You know, this is craft and development. I don't know. Does that count as craft and development? But then last night I was uh, standing in one room and I was like, wait, like, this is a great idea. This is fantastic. And it's, it's leaning a little bit toward business, but I could totally tweak it into craft and development. And this would be a really, really good thing to talk about in the stream. And by the time I got down the hall to put it into my notes, gone, nothing, nothing. So, um, yeah, I, I'm just going to say that, uh, I know that that's what happens to me when I have too much going on. This is why I have a to do list and Evernote. Um, that's also why we don't have a really polished script for tonight when we never have a really polished script. Everything I do is uh, largely extemporaneous, as you can tell when you listen to me, but that's why we don't have a really organized show for right now. Um, yeah, so what, um, what I did want to pull out and say is in my ads course lesson that I was in today, um, we were talking about you know working on a first round of ads and doing some test runs and then refining those and doing some test runs before we opened it up and spent you know actual budget money uh, on this. And um, one person said, I just really liked this and I wanted to share it with you guys because um, as, as writers and creators, you will get this. Um, and this, by the way, this is not an ads course specifically for writers. This is actually um, you know completely different. It's an ads course um, for business owners. And, um, and so I just, it, it, they're, they weren't honing this in this direction, but you guys as creative people will get this. The first time that you're walking through a process, um, making new ads or, or trying new marketing or something is just getting it done. That's the task is just to do the thing. And then the second time you do it is when you start to refine it or improve it or make it better. And I was like, oh, we call these first drafts. I can get, I get this, this, is, this makes sense. Um, so as I am, you know, trying to make this collection of ads, you know, this, this ad set that I'm going to run and because of the way online advertising works, I want to have multiple iterations of an ad, uh, you know, sort of several of my ads targeting for the same thing um, that I can try, you know, different testing with different audiences and see what are going to be the better kind of ads. So it's, you know, it's a bit of a project. Um, and, but I can look at those just as my rough drafts. I don't have to nail this perfectly the first time. I just have to get it there. And now I've got a formula or a structure that I can play with. So yeah, Shy Red Fox, you mean there are first drafts and other things like ads? Yay, I know, right? Like it's so, it's so liberal. Now, first drafts in legal contacts, contracts, like don't sign the first draft, okay? <laughs> there you go. But, um, but for the most part, like giving, giving yourself that latitude that it doesn't have to be perfect the first time. Um, I am in uh, a group called Thrive. Uh, it's run by DogViz um, that is specifically for uh, professional trainers and business development for pro professional trainers because you know, a lot of us get into this because we are behavior nerds and we're really into the science and uh, I love science. That doesn't make me good at marketing, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, so I'm in this, uh, business group and the catchphrase that we will hear, um, we meet monthly and then, you know, we, t we talk, um, in between, but the, the catchphrase that you will hear constantly is done is better than perfect. Done is better than perfect. And, you know, I can always come back and clean it up if I want, but done is better than perfect. And, uh, so the, that has liberated me from, you know, it's, it's, it's just another way of saying perfection is the enemy of good, which is, you know, another thing that you'll hear a lot, but, uh, it has, it has helped a lot when I am facing, you know, but I can't get this exactly the way it needs to be. That's fine. Get it functional. And then you can always come back and fix it later. Right. So, um, all the video that I shot for my online course, uh, this weekend, I'm not thrilled with all this video. Like my dog, my dog is fine. That's great. <laughs> but me, I'm not thrilled with all the video. Um, 
but I, but having video that I am mostly okay with is way better than not having any video, right? So um, later I can reshoot the video if I feel like it. So, okay. So that is, I guess, 20 minutes of Lara just um, soul dumping into the internet. Hi, internet, sorry. Uh, but yeah, so I guess at this point, um, I can talk a little bit about how I, how I prioritize, if that is remotely interesting to anyone at all, or this can turn into an ask me anything, which terrifies me because the word anything is really big and I, I would never use that if it weren't an established in, in an internet phrase, but ask me most things, is that a, is that a, is that a thing? Can we do that? I don't know. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's, uh, there we go. So just tell me, tell me what, what you would guys, what you guys would like to do at this point. Um, and I'm sorry if you're hearing uh, my dog snorting, um, down here. She's, she's quite comfortable on the floor. So snoring. Uh, so, oh my gosh, there's a lot of dropped frames. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on there. Let's see if I can figure out what's slowing us down. I don't know. I apologize. I'm not sure what's going on there. But, okay. Ooh, Shia Ivan Fox is working on tip on book keywords. Yeah, I would love to share my secret formula for book keywords. Um, my secret formula for book keywords right now mostly involves a lot of dark chocolate. Um, so there are, <laughs> there are several things um, that I'm gonna share and, and pretty much very little of this is original to me. These are all things that I've just picked up from different places. Um, so let me ask this first. Do you have uh, what we typically call comp authors or comp titles? So for me, for example, um, sometimes when people are trying to talk about my books, you know, if, if, you, if, you, were, if you were saying, you know, I just read this book by Laura Van Aaron uh, I know you like stuff by Patrick Rothfuss and Brander Sanderson and Robin Hobbs, so you might like to try her this book that I just finished. Um, it doesn't mean that I write exactly like those people. It means that's the general type, style, category, feel. Feel is probably the most important of that. Um, so, and <laughs> Kate says, ah, comps reaches for more chocolate. I am so with you. I really, really hate um, working on comp titles or comp authors um, for a variety of reasons, not least that I am thoroughly Midwestern all the way through to my core. And yeah, this is the best selling author that I am like, just grates all over my soul. <laughs> so, um, so, okay. So, but it's, but, but Shy Red Fox says, oh yes, I do. So you do have some comps. So great. Um, several things you can do. First of all, those comps can be your keywords as well, depending on where you're using your keywords. Um, some platforms like Amazon uh, gets a little twitchy. If I were to say Brandon Sanderson is one of my keywords, um, that's, that's gonna, that's gonna step on some toes. So you don't want to be cautious about that. Um, but if you are looking like there are things that I could use in an ad that I couldn't use in my uh, KDP keyword listing. So just, you know, be aware of, you know, read, read the terms of service and the guidelines for every place that you're putting keywords because they will have different, uh, different, different kinds of keywords that you can put in depending on where you are putting them. So, uh, so all that. Okay. So then I look at, okay, well, what kind of keywords describe Brandon Sanderson? Uh, I'm just going to take that and run with it because <laughs> that's where I was. Um, and for some reason, for me, this is easier because I can look over there at Brandon Sanderson's work where I can't look at my own work without feeling too close to it. And um, somebody once described this as you can't read the label of the bottle while you're inside the bottle. And I thought that was just a great visual for me, but I can look over there, see the bottle that Brandon Sanderson is in and read his labels. <laughs> so um, epic fantasy, military fantasy, action adventure fantasy, you know, I can, I can start picking off, you know, some sub genres there to go with, um, might, might be some tropes. Found family is a big one uh, in my Shard of Elan series. So I could use that as a keyword. Um, 
I can look at what are the kinds of things that are found in this book. Um, there is magic, there are mages, um, you know, I could, you know, depending on what flavor of magic, um, some books might pull out witches or wizards or sorcerers or mages. Like they're, each of those has a little bit different connotation to it. And um, so you could emphasize what kind of uh, might be that, you know, maybe urban fantasy would do better with witches, whereas um, what I'm writing does better with mages. Okay, a lot of this, I'm going to tell you with the keywords, this is definitely one of those places where round one is just filling in the blanks. Round two is where we start to refine them. And it is not, um, it is not something that you're going to nail the first time. Um, I don't think anybody does possibly the people who make their living doing keywords for other people, they're going to be pretty good at it. For the rest of us, we just keep flailing at this. Like, that's, that's, sorry. <laughs> this is welcome to the depressing ask me most things. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and I think keywords is one of those places where it's, you you brainstorm and you do not allow any editing or filtering during your brainstorm. You write down every freaking thing. And if that means you set yourself a list of I'm going to write down 45 terms and I will, by the end of that, I'm just writing any stupid thing that comes to mind because I have to make it to 45 and I can't filter anything out because then I won't make it to my 45 or whatever arbitrary number you pick. Um, and then you can come back and say, okay, how do these relate to my work? How do these relate to my comp titles? And, um, and because you, because it's so easy to shut down ideas while you're working, um, sometimes having a way to turn that off, like I need to read this, this number or whatever. Um, yeah, just <laughs> like setting a minimum word count. <laughs> Some of those words are going to be terrible, but at least you made something come out, right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm used to flailing. I flail just fine. Good, I'll send you a membership card. We'll get t-shirts, <laughs> yeah. Okay, and I'm, I'm still getting huge amounts of dropped frames reported here. I don't know what's going on. If you guys tell me if, if you're getting um, stutters or something, uh, I apologize, I don't know. I don't know how to fix it because I don't know what's causing it. So everything, everything I have over here is paused, so yeah. <laughs> yes, play all club shirts, yes good. Um, first, first rule of flail club is, oh no, panic. <laughs> yes, that's, that's it. Um, yeah. So, um, so when I was facing, you know, when I sat down last Tuesday or Wednesday and I went, why, why is, why is, why does this hurt? Why is everything going wrong? Why, why, why can I not catch up with anything? And I, and I realized that the stack of things I had set myself, um, you know, I, I started having to filter because you have to filter. It's not all going to get done. There is no way it's going to get all done. Um, so, you know, started thinking, I looked at, well, I've got Camp NaNoWriMo and I'm making good progress on it. I'm feeling good about that. But if I miss a day or several days now, let's be honest, but if I start with, I need to talk myself into this. If I miss a day and I don't get my minimum word count and you know, I don't, that I don't get my Camp NaNoWriMo digital badge for minimum word count every day. What happens? Like, really, what happens? I didn't get my digital badge. That honestly is not going to show past the month of April anyway. Like, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, and so, yeah, is that a little bit disappointing? Sure. Like, digital badges are fun. That's why we have them in the first place. They do make good motivators. But if I have to say, okay... I can work on this online course to get it done so I can get the ads going for it so I can take advantage of the ad course that I have paid for or I can get my digital badge. Well, when you put it like that, okay, <laughs> like so so you um so sometimes it's a matter of I need to step back and look at all the things I'm doing and 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 start assessing like what we, there's um the phrase tyranny of the urgent um, is one I learned uh, back my first year of college, and oh my gosh, is it the most glorious phrase? Because things with deadlines feel urgent, whether or not they're important. So, important and urgent are not synonymous and don't live in the same category. You can have lots of things that are important, but um, 
but we let them get pushed out by things that are urgent. Uh, so that this is, uh, this is something that I was trying to make decisions on. So Camp NaNoWriMo, I'm working on uh, Kin and Kind. I, that's my fourth book in the series. People are waiting on this. I would love to have it out. Um, I would love to have it done. I would love to, you know, get, get through this, but it's not worth, you know, sacrificing these other things that, um, not that Kin and Kind isn't important, but Kin and Kind doesn't have to be done in April, right? Like it's the release date is in December. Okay. <laughs> like it does not have to be done in April. Um, I can, I can buy myself some extra time by, by putting that off for a little bit and working on this other stuff. So yeah, that's, um, that's where we are. So are there other questions for ask me most things or I could, I could go into a little interpretive dance. I don't know. Or, I, or yeah, I'm just, um, I feel a little bad because, you know, I wanted to, I wanted, really, really wanted to remember the excellent thing that I thought of last night, uh, to share with you guys. And I don't know, it'll show up Thursday morning or something as I'm wandering around the house. Uh, you know, thinking about how I need to do dishes and then boom, that'll, that'll be like, oh, that was that great idea that I had that's, that's gone now. So, so, okay. Um, so I'm just skimming through to see if I missed anything. looks like, looks like I am caught up on the chat. So that is good. Um, yeah. So <laughs> tonight, I'm going to go back and work on, after this is done, I'm going to go back and work on my website a little bit. And, um, cause if I can get that, uh, fun uh, fully functional in the way that I want, then I'm pretty close to launching my course. And then I can be like, Ooh, look, all of that's off my plate. That's a thing that's done. Not perfect, but done. And now I can work on, you know, something else. So, so that would get, so, okay. Um, Okay. So what are you guys all working on? I know, um, so Shyver Fox is working on keywords tonight, which is, um, yeah, Kate, please send Shy some more chocolate as well through the internet. Um, and what else are people working on this evening or morning or wherever you are? <laughs> Growing is fine. Um, um, wow. I, I like have some more chocolate. So, okay. <laughs> so, um, do you jump right into the next thing or celebrate between tasks? Oh, both like, like both. <laughs> so the, I, I definitely celebrate. I, I want to say I, I feel pretty good about balancing. Like there are times when I'm like, you know what? I'm done. I'm so very done. I'm extremely done at this point. And other times I finish a task and I move right on to the next thing because I can, okay. I'm in the zone, I'm getting stuff done. And I know that I, it's not going to be punishing to me to go and move the reinforcement, the, the, the celebration was getting to swipe that off my to-do list. Um, I use, I do, I use to do list, as I said, and I have it set so that I, I could just check the box, but on my, on my phone, I get to savagely swipe that <laughs> to the side, which is so much more viscerally pleasing. Um, so that matters. Um, oh, we do need a chocolate command. All right. You're like, I am the worst at bots. I will have to work on that. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe Naka sensei could, could send over a chocolate friend. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see if I can find a chocolate bot. Um, so, oh, PJ Zufit deleted a time sucking game off your phone. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes like, you know, environmental control is the right choice. Um, yeah, that is, that is a big thing. That is, um, yeah, I, I, there are, there are some things, there are some parameters I set myself where some things are more accessible in some locations or sometimes than others. <laughs> that is absolutely true. Um, oh good. Shy will help with, Shy Red Fox will help with the chocolate command. That would be excellent. I will totally chocolate command, uh, chocolate bot would be fantastic. Um, but anyway, yeah, so sometimes, finishing the task is the celebration and I just move on because that's more efficient than having celebration. And sometimes like stopping and being like, and now I party. Um, even if party in this case means I go down the hall and refill my drink. Okay. <laughs> like sometimes that is the party, but, um, other times last night, uh, for example, I was supposed to meet some friends online and we were going to stream something together. 
and it was the first time in days. I don't four or five days, whatever, I had been awake and not working on a task. Um, so we met and we had every technological snafu that, you know, like, um, one of, one of, one of us kept you know, making jokes about it. It was like, this is like a terrible joke. Like who would win four college educated women or one streaming service you know, to three streaming service, five streaming service. Like we, we seriously went through five platforms before we found some, some way to make things work. And, um, and it was pretty hilarious. And I, and I actually sat there and thought for a moment, like, okay, we're not getting anything done. Like we're not doing what we were, said we were going to be doing. We're, you know, I'm, you know, I could be getting this other stuff done. I've got so much stuff stacked up. You know, what if I, what if I left them to work with it? And then I went and worked until, and then I was like, no, this is the first time in four or five days that I have not been actively engaged on a project. I'm just going to talk with humans and laugh at how difficult this is. And if, and, and, and that was the right choice, right? Like, you know, I'm, I put in my time. I was, I'd done, I'd done good work. I'd earned that. So, okay. Um, let's see. Oh, <laughs> okay. I have eight hours a week back, which I am diligently using to not write my book. Okay. You know, procrastination is its own art form as well. Um, oh, okay. So Kate is writing fluff, which is completely legit. Um, like we can, we, Fluff is a part of the cycle as well. Um, and fluff is, is, is also, um, get, I had a conversation with Grace, who I think is not in the chat tonight. Um, but uh, she said something once about, well, you, you write serious fiction and, and I write fluff. And I'm like, your fluff is serious? Like, you know, not serious, like in tone, but like, it's real books, okay? You don't have to be all dramatic and angsty all the time. Get fluff is real. Oh, okay, sorry, that's completely off. And inching close to asking for new disability readers. Yeah, so um, just shout out to the universe. Uh, Kate's got some excellent material that needs a couple of sensitivity readers. If anybody would like to uh, uh, volunteer or pass the word. So there we go, because um, because it's stuff that needs seen. Um, and simple celebrations are good. Yes, like if it if it if it counts, it counts. Like it doesn't matter. Nobody get nobody else gets to judge how you celebrate. But I mean, yes, don't don't drive drunk or stupid. Like yeah, yeah, yeah okay. So um, okay, so um, oh good. And PJ Zufit uh, wrote some notes for dragons, unicorns, chimeras, and clickers. At some point, I'm going to figure out how to write a behavior book with fewer than thirty syllables in the title. That is a thing that I'm going to uh, I'm going to do. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so I want to tell a story. Kate, Kate says she's not worried about her sensitivity reader saying no. She's worried about repeating the wait six months for no feedback and ex existential crisis that happened during the first round. Um, and so I'm going to tell you a story about one of the first times that I asked a sensitivity reader to read um, for a character I was writing with a disability. And it was a pretty severe disability and I was pretty worried about getting it wrong, like very worried about getting it wrong. And so, um, this was a person, uh, I knew not through the writing world. And, um, I asked if she would take a look at it for me and she said yes. And so I sent her the, um, the scenes in question and I emailed them off. And then I waited, I waited and I waited and I waited. And, um, and I start panicking because of course that's what you do compounded by the issue that I knew this person through, um, the behavior community. And I knew this person was a positive reinforcement, uh, person the way the, like, like I am. And in this community, the way you say that's not right, try again, is to just not respond. <laughs> like that is, that is a pretty, um, yeah, that, that's how, so the fact that I was not getting any response was equivalent to, oh no, nope, nope, not even, nope, nope, nope. And um, so uh, I just quietly freaked out for a while and um, finally went back to, I think we were, I think we were still communicating and, and you know, about other things and we have some events that were being planned and whatnot. And I finally went back to that email thread and I realized that when I had replied to her to send me the thing, send the, send the scenes, 
the way the email thread had been set up, I had actually replied only to myself and it had never gone to her. <laughs> I looked at it and I was like, I have been freaking out over here for weeks because she wasn't responding to this thing that she actually had never even received. And she was probably wondering why I had never sent it and was just being too nice to ask me where it was. <laughs> and um, so then I wrote to her and I'm like, hey, this is what I, I totally thought you weren't answering because it was terrible. And she's like, oh yeah, I totally would have assumed that as well. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, um, that's, that's a long, long way to go. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, that's exactly how that goes. Okay. So I see some, see some chat happening about finding, uh, readers. So that that's great. Um, Hey guys, I love networking and, um, like I just, this is, this is the kind of, this is the way that, uh, that we, we find each other. Um, so please share all the things in the chat. That's, that is great. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, where was I going? I have no idea. This is like stream of consciousness, uh, this, the stream, stream of consciousness tonight. Um, so Oh my gosh, I have no concentration. I, it's too early to blame it on the shot. I only got it today. I can't have brain fog yet. It hasn't had time to set in. Now it's just, this is just typical busy Laura. So, um, but I am, um, I, I, I will, I will share here what I learn, um, when, when I get the ads working. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm actively working on both Amazon ads and Facebook ads, um, book bug book bub ads are another thing that I want to learn more about, but I'm just, uh, you can't learn everything at once. You can't do it. Uh, so that's on the list to get to eventually. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm, you know, just ad advertising is not the fun part of marketing, but on the other hand, kind of, kind of does need to happen. So that's, uh, I will, I will, I will make all the mistakes and then I will pass what I learned on to you. So I, I can be your first draft in some areas. All right. Um, what else? Let's see. Um, so, sorry, just checking here. <laughs> Thank you, Laura Sensei. Yeah, just, um, yeah, all the, all the, uh, Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't even brain you guys. This is why, this is why I'm working on things that have very specific to-do lists with step by step by step. Um, so yeah, today I was arguing with the Facebook pixel, which um, was its own set of excitement. And it took me a couple of hours to figure out I could just start over like it was broken, but I could just start from scratch. It was, oh, uh, <laughs> so, and I'm, I'm a big fan of, uh, of, of this. I was so happy. I was listening to a podcast today. Um, and, uh, Kate knows who, uh, father Mike is cause Kate's the one who put me on to father Mike who, um, uh, has a Catholic podcast and, um, he was, he was just going through something and he stopped and he's just like, sorry, I got really distracted in the middle of that prayer right there. And I was like, oh my gosh, like when the priest is admitting that he's getting distracted while he's praying, like it's fine for me to get distracted in my daily life. This is, this is okay. Cause I'm just like, Phew, right there. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> Father Mike. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not Catholic, but I really, really like Father Mike. Like he's pretty cool. So, okay. Anyway. I hope it's okay that he has a, he has a non-Catholic fangirl, like Protestant fangirl. Is that okay? I don't know. We'll, we'll be good. He doesn't even know me. It's fine. All right. <laughs> Where was I going? So is next week a create-in? Oh my gosh. Let me find a calendar. This is, there is no, like neurons are not talking to each other at all. No, next week's a learn with me. Okay. And, um, and there is, no way what I'm, what I'm going to pretend to, uh, to have that. I am, tr I am in the act of one of the things on my to-do list, which I did not list, but is still there, um, is hunting down some people who are good at Patreon and other crowdfunding, uh, kind of 
uh, is, it some, is that crowdfunding? It's not know, whatever, but something like that's a support to your support your local creator um, kind of platforms. And um, there are some things that I'm looking at that I'm going to try to get some people organized. Also, uh, I'm going to try to bring in some people to talk about audiobooks. Um, you know, deciding what, what to turn into audiobooks, deciding how to create audiobooks, because that is something that I got several people asking me about in the last 10 days or so. And I found myself answering the same questions repeatedly. And I was like, well, clearly, <laughs> if I'm going to say this three or four times, let's just make it, let's just make an episode out of it because obviously other people will have these questions as well. So, um, so we're, uh, so we're, so those are things that we're looking forward to, but I don't have dates yet because the learn with me's are very subject to other people's schedules. So, um, so that's how we're doing it. So I don't know what we'll have for our learn with me next week, but if you have requests, I'm always happy to take them. I just make no promises. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And that's most of what I, I mean, that was, that's more than what I had for tonight because tonight got thrown under the bus next to the camp from Hanorimo. Um, but I will get those words back on track uh, once I get some of these other things sorted, which I'm making progress. Like I've got um, my, my online course has a beta tester going through it right now. So, so that's good. Um, so we'll, we'll get there. It'll work out. So, okay. Um, all right. And yeah, so I'm probably going to wrap us here so I can get back to work. Um, I did check Elena's schedule. I don't know what she's doing tonight. We might, we might chop, and, chop and see if she's, uh, um, if she's doing things or we could just, we could just call it good here. Um, yeah, so last chance for questions before I refill my beverage and find myself some, some uh, dark chocolate and plunge back into my to-do list. Oh yeah, um, a class on Patreon. Hey, that's that's on my list. I'm, I've got some people that I'm looking to recruit. Oh, hey, Elena's in the chat doing body casting tonight. Woot, okay, that'll be really fun. How soon will we be on? Should we raise you now or um, or just like tell everybody to hop over in a few minutes? I mean, you could, uh, you could put on a now loading. <laughs> so yeah, so jumping into Kate and um, KT Evan Rest and PJ Zufit's conversation. Um, the, yeah, finding sensitivity readers is an event and there are people who do it for hire, but I, I'm never, not that those are not qualified readers. That's not what I'm trying to say. But, um, but I think some people are really good about specifying what they're good for reading for. And some people are like, you know, I, I've at least seen a few things that were like, I'm a sensitivity reader, yo. And like, okay, but there's a lot of things that, you know, I'm, I want specific feedback on this specific thing and, and not everybody's qualified in all areas. Right. So, um, you know, it's, this is something where I think networking probably in many cases is going to get you a better result than just opening up a Twitter, you know, request for, I need a sensitivity reader because, um, you know, that that's not, you know, sometimes you need something that's very specific and, um, somebody who's just like, I'm a sensitivity reader for money, unless they're really specific about things, um, is not necessarily the, uh, uh, the, the, the best, the best source for that. I don't think I said that very well. Just pretend that that made sense when it got out of my mouth. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, frequently, um, if you can find a, another writer who is capable of, uh, of reading for what you need them to read, um, that's great because, uh, they are going to, you'll be there because they understand the structure. They're going to be good at, you know, like, I don't know. I had someone who was, um, reading one of my works in progress. And this is not something that's, that's even out yet. Um, but he, he pointed out, he's like, okay, this is, this is the common stereotype that, that, that I face. And it's, it's fine that you have this character, you know, being upset in this, in this situation, but that is the first time we see him. So that's the character introduction. So, um, so this is, you know, it's, it's going to create more of an impact than it would if this were, um, you know, another kind of character in this, you know, like, okay, you know what, that makes sense. Like, because, you know, he, and because he's a writer, he's able to, to 
pick apart the, the mechanics of it a little bit better. So, okay. <laughs> so, okay. Um, all right. So Elaine is working. We may just, um, swing over a few minutes. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I'm just going in. Twitter's just mean. I haven't experienced Twitter being mean. Um, but I definitely wouldn't trust, you know, anyone's opinion on, you know, it's just way too anonymous. Yeah. And I think both of those, you know, Twitter, Twitter subgroups are, are very, can be very personal. Twitter abroad can be very impersonal. Um, and definitely like you, you can experience the, uh, the witch hunt phenomenon, um, sometimes on Twitter, but um, other times you can get like wildly supportive communities on Twitter. It's just the law of large numbers. Like by the time you put that many million people together, you're going to find all categories inside of it. Um, and, but yeah, the point about it being too anonymous um, hopefully by the time we're getting to sensitivity readers, we're not nameless, right? And I want somebody who is, um, there is a, there is a massive amount of vulnerability in asking for a sensitivity reader, um, and in being a sensitivity reader, right? Both of those are, um, are things where we need to, we need to understand that we are working as a team here to make something better, not as, um, let me tell you why you're wrong and let me tell you why you're wrong. Okay. And, um, and I think you want to find somebody who is going to work with you, um, and not somebody who is just there to a, like I checked off a box so I can say I did this or B here to justify a particular platform or statement or you know, whatever. Like, um, you know, we want, I don't you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Like, I'm like just, I'm like, I don't, I don't need to platform about this. You guys know where, you know, you know where we are. Yeah. You know where we are because I told you I had a complete, uh, uh, complete breakdown and crisis while I was waiting for <laughs> this person to get back to me on what I had done wrong. So yes. Okay. And by the way, I have asked three three more people to read those scenes, um, and give me feedback. And it was absolutely nerve wracking every single time. And, and it's still not a published piece because I'm still not hundred percent comfortable with it. So, um, yeah, like, uh, I, I, I'm just going to say it's, it's a, it's a hugely vulnerable process. Um, I am sure for both, both ends of the, uh, both part, both, both members of the team partnership. Um, that, you know, because you're, you, you, you do it, but you only ask for sensitivity readers because you care, right? Like <laughs> if you don't care, you don't ask for sensitivity readers. So you, you, if, but you have that skin in the game that you want to get it right and you don't want to be uh, hurtful. So yeah. Okay. Wow. That was a lot of, um, just Laura opinioning. Sorry. That happens. <laughs> So, um, learn with me. I will hope, I will hope we can get some uh, people on with the, with the, uh, Patreon and similar platforms. Um, and I just got referred today to a thread that was actually on Twitter on about, um, deciding how to fund and funding. So I was skimming that for, for this just m minutes before, um, we went live here. So I'll go back and check that out a little bit. So, yeah, we, we, we are here to listen, even to babbling. Good, because babbling's what you're getting tonight. Yeah, um, yeah, this is, this is water, not caffeine. It's probably showing. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, well, tomorrow on my blog, you can read a piece from Shy Red Fox um, about her, uh, uh, her upcoming release in, oh my gosh, what's his name? Show, showing, showing, put his name in the, put his name in the chat because I'm blanking because I have no brain cells whatsoever. Um, and, uh, but he'll be on the blog tomorrow and I feel, I feel like there was something else I wanted to tell you, but I don't have notes about it. So it's not there. <laughs> like I'm just, Yoshi is showing. Thank you. I, there was a showing. Um, yeah. And I, but I'm sitting here thinking like, as soon as I go offline, I'm going to be like, Oh, I was going to tell people a thing. Yeah. A thing. 
Don't know. Don't know. Okay. Um, yeah. And, oh, actually, I don't know if you guys would be interested in this or not. Um, there are, sometimes I, I go through it and I find, well, <laughs> an example. Um, Story Origin is going officially live uh, this week. It's been in beta for like a year. <laughs> it's officially launching um, as a paid service this week. And so if you sign up um, for Story Origin, which in the U.S. is um, $100 a year, but you can get a lifetime 30% discount, so it'll be $70 a year um, for renewals and everything. Um, and so that's something like I put that on my Discord, maybe a couple places just to let people know. Um, but other things like I'm looking at um, a software service that would I can use for hosting audio files. So if I was selling audio content, um, whether it be audiobooks or other audio content, I can host that and retail it there without having to go through other platforms. And so anyway, I don't know how much, a lot of that stuff tends to be a little more techy, which um, I know, like I said, many writers were frightened by spreadsheets when they were children, um, but you know, also other technical aspects. You know, I don't know if people are into that, but on the other hand, darn it, those can be really useful. Uh, so tell me, you know, if that's the kind of thing that you'd like to hear about going forward. So, oh yay, so we've got some newsletter trading going on. Awesome. Um, and yeah, so um, anyway, if, if that's something that you, you guys would like to hear more about tools that I find and that I'm using, um, I can do some of those as walkthroughs. Like I, my life would not happen in the form that it has taken currently without Evernote. Like everything is in Evernote, like everything for running my life, um, everything for, for recording things that happen, um, that I need later. I'm like, you know, when did I get that yellow fever vaccine or whatever? Um, and then ridiculous amounts of like story research, all of that stuff goes into Evernote. Um, so those are the kind of things that are essential to me, but I don't know if that's the kind of thing that other people want to know. So this is just me saying, tell me what kind of stream you would like to see in the future and it might happen. So, oh, yes, please walkthroughs. Okay. Um, yes, the audiobook selling, but also ebook and paperback selling in your own site would be helpful. Oh, that's, I'm doing all of this. Like I have ebooks and audiobooks and paperbacks on my own site. So these would be things that we can do a walkthrough. So yeah, let me think about that. And, um, if, if all else fails, if I can't get, um, Patreon or audiobooks in time for next, next week's learn with me, we'll do a walkthrough on selling on your own site. So your homework for next week uh, is going to be to have an online platform where you can install software, um, ideally, so something like WordPress. And if you can't do it there because you're using another platform, then um, then we will, then there's still ways to do it, but um, it just means that you have to offload a little bit more uh, onto third parties. Um, which sometimes means losing control, sometimes means losing royalties. Doesn't matter. We'll talk through options. So, okay. So look for that possibly for next week. So let me, because I didn't have this open because I was <laughs> barely functional to get on the, on, on the stream tonight to get on the line. All right. All right, we're gonna start our, oh, we're not gonna do that. I'm gonna to totally mistype that. Um, we are going to start our countdown to go raid Elena and body casting, and body casting is pretty fun, so I didn't realize she was gonna do that tonight. That's pretty cool. Um, so we're gonna do that. Remember, our raid call is everything is connected, um, more connected than usual if you are <laughs> body casting, and um, so we will do that, and then uh, I will see that, oh, I'm hoping that the raid call, okay, good. I was like, I'm just, the, the, the lag totally threw me off there. Yes, our raid call is everything is connected. And then I will see you guys next week where we will do something educational and slightly more organized than we are this week. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me. Um, thanks, PJ Zoo Fit. We'll see you later. <laughs> good. Excellent. All right, it's totally going to take a miracle to get me back on back on here. Awesome.
All right, let's do the thing. Bye, guys.